Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. If you're a project manager and you've ever thought to yourself, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done things differently, then you'll appreciate that everything seems clearer and easier with hindsight. But generating your own hindsight is hard and painful. George Bernard Shaw said, if history repeats itself and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's experience and especially from sharing their scars. Sharing your experience gives you access to someone else's hindsight without the hard work and the pain. So as part of my campaign for Real Project Managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some Real Project Managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Jill Plunger, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Jill, I'd like you to start, if you can, by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. So I've been in retail ever since I started working. Um, I did deviate from the retail as a sector very briefly, but actually I came back quite quickly because I love it. And I've had, I guess, various different roles within retail since I started. Initially, I was focused more from a commercial point of view, so doing buying and merch planning. And then there was an opportunity to do something slightly different, of which I thought, actually, yeah, let's try something different. Let's kind of broaden my skills a little bit. Um, and tried that, and it was actually a change management role at the time. Mm -hmm. totally brand new into that area of the business so it was really kind of creating it and setting it up from scratch and I went into that and actually I really loved it um, it really fit my skill set really well um, lots about kind of talking to people engaging with people building relationships and um, the kind of logical thinking being really well planned out and I've kind of never really looked back um, I've, I've done various change management programs I guess each time building on slightly uh, larger scale programs and then um, more recently they moved into program management itself. So what sort of um, projects or programs do you typically get involved with? What sort of size and shape are they? They've varied between um, it can be focused more on kind of ways of working or technology based programs or even kind of more physical build programs, operational programs. Um, they have varied in shape and size so I've done some where they kind of focus on um, I guess implementing a change initiative where it could focus on say from 200 people um, up to kind of six or thousand people um, from budgets ranging from you know a few hundred thousand up to uh, multiple millions so it has really ranged over the years um, mm -hmm. but that's what keeps interesting right yeah yeah okay so thinking back over your experience can mm -hmm. you tell us about a, a, a scar that you've acquired so where something's gone wrong on a project that you were managing mm -hmm. what you learned from it of course, so um, one of them would be earlier on in my change management career, I was I guess, thrown a bit in the deep end on a um, change programme and it was all about um, designing and then um, embedding a new way of working for one of the FTSE 100 companies I'd worked for. And initially starting it, I was like, yep, yeah, change manager, tick, very well versed in change management ways of working hmm not so familiar with that mm -hmm. at that particular time so to start where you get to the point where you need to almost design what is this new way of working that you want to bring into the company it kind of threw me a little bit if I'm honest um, and actually my mind started going a bit on overdrive to the point where where I would normally be quite pragmatic about how I view things very logically in my thinking my approach a lot of that actually went out the window. Right. And I think when my mind went on such overdrive, I got quite panicked. So I got sort of the, the tight knot in my stomach. Right. Um, to the point where, you know, I'd be trying to almost work so long and so hard and kind of hours wise yep. to arrive at what is this what's this kind of golden nugget? What is this, you know, new way of working that we need to arrive at? And I really lost sight of the fact that Actually, I'm not an expert in ways of working. I'm an expert in change management at the time, or now program management. And actually, I almost lost sense of my purpose. My purpose wasn't there to be an expert in that. My purpose was there to drive the program forward, to you know bring all the right stakeholders together to arrive at that answer, to kind of get us, I guess, from A to B, um, and manage those relevant risks along the way, and then embed it. And I, I went into such panic and overdrive, I totally lost sight of that. Um, to the point that I was trying to sort of do you know, lots of research and, and almost become that expert on employment law and you know what other different ways of working that you could have and what felt right for the company. And I got to the point where I just could not see the wood for the trees, to the point where even my specialism in and my kind of expertise in change management just went out the window. Um, I found that I'd stopped engaging with people. Um, I guess I kind of went a bit more insular and kind of went into myself and not 
I was really panicked and and really I felt a bit stressed actually with it. Sounds like it, yeah. So much so to the point that it then got to probably about two weeks later when I sort of checked in with one of my um, one of my colleagues and she was saying, you know what, you don't really see yourself. And I sort of said, well, I feel like I've been thrown in the deep end on this, if I'm you know, really honest. And I felt I needed someone to talk to at that time. You know, how, how do I arrive at this new way of working? Um, you know, I'm not an expert here and I don't know if legally we can do that, etc. And she really helped me and she sort of just said the, the one question of, do you think you need to be an expert in this? I was like, well, no, of course I don't. Oh, and then it suddenly clicked where I'd been totally spiraling out of control. I'd lost sight of what my purpose actually was and what my role was there. My role was to consult with the experts in the business. There were employment law experts in the business. Right. You know, there were specialists in behaviours and um, kind of the new insights that were coming out and the new innovation in the marketplace. Should have gone and just consulted with those guys to begin with yes. instead of i guess fretting and getting myself into such a tiz with it um well actually i probably wasted a couple of weeks looking back on that now um well i could have actually been using that time to build the relationships and i think what i really learned from that was you know going forward now i will always consult with the area of experts because the reality is, is that even if you focus and you know you specialize in project management, program management on one particular kind of area, so whether that be, you know, build works or employment law or whatever that is, it will take you so long to become that absolute expert. There's people that have studied it for years and years and years and keep doing all the relevant qualifications. So even if you continue to keep your specialism within that that one area, it's gonna take you ages to mm. catch up with those people. Those people are there and they're so willing to help you. You know, go and consult with them, talk to them, you know, you'll learn so much from getting their input, but also let them help you build a better solution that's then more likely to land with the business, with the people when you're trying to embed that relevant change programme. And I've found that I don't actually generally do programmes where it's the same thing time after time. Often you'll go and you'll be doing one minute, you'll be doing a a ways of working program, the next minute it'll be a technology program, the next it'll be, you know, a team rebrand program. And actually from consulting the experts around you, not only do you learn a lot more, you arrive at the better solutions and it gives you much more breadth as well. So I think overall my, my kind of real scar from that came from just totally forgetting what my purpose and what my sense was with being there. But through consulting with the experts, I was able to not only then arrive at a better solution, you build better relationships you ultimately have more credibility to what it is you're then trying to, to kind of go along with your end solution. Um, you know, you go to stakeholder forums, you know, you go to your steer co, your governance mm -hmm. meetings, and you'll pretty much always get the question of, has so-and-so been involved in this, i.e. the area expert? And if you can say, well, yes, actually, they helped build this, they helped us arrive at this solution, then immediately that confidence is installed in that stakeholder and it makes your, your job of kind of landing that message so much easier as well. Jill, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Jill about something that went wrong on a project that she was managing and how she recovered from it. Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. To me, that means that although the future may not be exactly like the past, it's often similar enough for the lessons of the past to be useful. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Jill's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these videos are useful and worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you'd like to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my Vimeo channel. For other articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.